Right. Since we don't have much time, I want to go ahead and get started. Um, this is the Community Combos Camp Organizing Woo! session. Let's organize, baby. Woo. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. I got the slide up. <clears throat> Hello? <laughs> I'm going to use this microphone. Um, my name is Kaleem Clarkson. And I am the uh, Drupal Camp Atlanta project lead. And what's going to be interesting is some, are the titles. We went with project lead. <laughs> I don't know why. I call myself uh, a camp director sometimes because it's funny. A camp director. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I decided on a name for myself last night, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, we started running um, previously Media Current was the, the main driver of the the. Drupal Camp Atlanta, and then in 2000, um, I believe it was 13, we, uh, we decided to, to try to organize as the Atlanta Drupal Users Group. So we actually, um, I don't know how many camps are run by user groups, um, but we, uh, we stepped up and we did it, and that's pretty much it. Nice, cool. Hey, uh, my name's Avi Schwab. Uh, I work for Palantir.net in Chicago. Uh, yeah, so I started um, on the organizing team for Midcamp. I don't have any title for myself. I think I called I called myself a founding co-organizer, <laughs> or also just like glue dude. Uh, I've I've held a bunch of um, different roles on the Midcamp team, um, everything from co-organizing to doing tweets and and all of that. Um, yeah, so I've been working on Midcamp since we started. Uh, in 2014, that's what the slide says, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so Midcamp is uh, around 250, well, between 200 and 250 folks. Um, small team, um, kind of separate from our user group, um, but there's a lot of intermixing um, between our groups. And uh, we're in Chicago, so you know, it's a big city. There's a lot of differences there. Um, so we're on the, you know, medium side, but we spend a lot of money. We spend a lot of money as well. <laughs> and my name is April Sides, and I am the camp organizer for Drupal Camp Asheville. Um, I'm also a lead Drupal architect at Media Current. Um, so Asheville was actually started by another person in Asheville who left the area, and I kind of took over that lead responsibility when he left. Um, so it's been about four years that I've had some experience with this, and our camp size is less than 100, around 100. Um, and we don't have a huge Drupal community in Asheville, so we're bringing everybody in to come and enjoy Asheville. So, uh, yeah. Um, so we just had a couple slides that we wanted to share with you guys. If you are organizing camps, if you're not aware, we do have a separate Drupal Camp Organizer Slack. Um, this is the Heroku link, but if you need an invite, you can just see us after this, and we can make sure you have access. It's a great resource for, um, you know, I've run into this problem, what do I do? And you can get lots of uh, other experiences and some advice. There's also, this link is on drupal.org slash slack. There's a whole list okay, of right, the right. slack teams that Drupal maintains. Nice. The really awesome thing that I've really enjoyed about <laughs> that slack is... <clears throat> No one really knows our pain. Sorry, <clears throat> tons of karaoke last night. <laughs> <laughs> Sweating it out too. Um, people don't understand the pain that we go through. I mean, it's, it's, you know, that's why I'm very critical of all the conferences because it's like we are in the same boat. And it's been really great to, you know, finally meet, meet everybody. You know, Kirsten came to our camp and meeting Avi and twice. twice. Damn. That means I have to go to her camp. That's the other thing. Yes. Promoting at other camps, I mean, like, you learn so many things, too. So, like, I'm, I'm definitely going to step it up and go to other camps. But it's just a great place to kind of just vent. Sometimes you need someone to listen, and everybody understands. Oh, yeah, November 8th. Sorry, November 7th. November 8th, 2018, Atlanta. Yeah, this year's the first year I've been to a non-Asheville camp, and I learned a lot. Like, it just, but it's a really, it's an undertaking to do. I hate doing the travel and all that, but like, I was really glad I went because I just see a completely different perspective on different decision making. See things that I liked. I went to Florida, 
So um, things that I like, things that I might not like, and, and we adopted some of the, the ideas that they were doing in Florida. <laughs> no. no. we gotta we gotta keep this uh, we gotta keep this on, on track. Um. <laughs> See, you need an Avi in your group. <laughs> um, so we also have a, a Google Doc for Drup Camp, Drupal Camp Organizers Playbook, and this is a quick link to it. We also have links in the Slack that are pinned in the channel in the general channel, um, so you don't have to to write this down real quick. Um, but once you're in, you'll have access to the, some of the stuff. This was started last year. Um, Avi started it at the um, community summits, and we just started collaborating. There were some calls later after the con um, to just sort of put together our different experiences on specific topics. Like it's kind of outlined with you know um, fundraising or marketing, and there's just like, hey, we do postcards. Hey, we do stickers. You know, like just some good advice in there, just in a document. It's a mess, but there are a lot of words. <laughs> Um, there's also a spreadsheet for when you are planning your dates to make sure that we don't overlap dates with another camp that might be nearby. Um, and so the more people who are organizing camps that know about this document makes it a lot better for knowing what decisions you can make in the moment um, to know if you're going to overlap someone. Um, that, I would say that that document is literally the most important thing that's been created because not only do you get to see the dates that are up and coming, you get to see the dates that were previous. And you also get to see dates that people are planning. So DrupalCal is cool, but it doesn't really help you plan. So if you take anything from today, take that spreadsheet, because I don't want you booking your camp on my camp date. <laughs> okay? Is that, <laughs> was that by experience? Yes. <laughs> It was by experience. I have so. experienced that as well. <laughs> if somebody wants to write a decoupled Drupal 2.0 that just pulls directly from that spreadsheet, you know, it would be great. It's it's probably like a weekend project. The history is awesome too. Being able to see the history is really remarkable. To see like what, how long the camp's been going in the years previous. That right. that's really sexy to me. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, we're like. Totally, like, we just have a couple slides. We want this to be totally interactive. But yeah, if you have a question, just come up to the mic and. So I think I have not looked at that. that oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> yes, and the camp and the date, throw it out. All right, well, we just had our camp. I'm Amber Matz. I organized the Pacific Northwest Drupal Summit in Portland. <laughs> it just happened. It was in the beginning of February. Um, something that would be interesting to include as a note on the camp dates is, like you said, the audience for your camp. Is it really like a, a very hyper-local or regional camp? Or are you bring, is it like this kind of national slash international audience where it's primarily people from out of town? Something that I took into consideration when I picked the dates was, well, I know that Drupal Camp Florida tends to attract it seems to attract a national audience, so I don't want to conflict with them. I knew they were in the same season, but I saw, you know, juggling venue availability, <laughs> too. I saw that uh, Drupal Camp New Jersey was on the same weekend that I chose, but I chose not to care about that because the opposite coast, like same as Florida is, is about as opposite as you can get, but because of what my perception was of the audience, I decided not to care about that because of I, the other options. And so maybe that might be a useful bit of information. It's just to say like, who is your audience really local, regional, or are you bringing in people from all over the place? So one thing I, I would like to comment on that, and I appreciate you with, with the honesty. Mm -hmm. We're competing for keynote speakers. We're competing for yep. presenters. Um, so yeah, while a lot of people in Atlanta, obviously are in the Southeast region, we get people from all over the country. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know there's not unlimited dates, but I would just be cautious of trying to assume anything as far yeah, as Yeah, and I think that's exactly my I point. I mean, there's so many dates, Is right? I don't want to yeah. um, make assumptions that are just like completely unfounded, but I did. Yeah. So. I, I just added that column to the spreadsheet. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, because I'm never going to put like we're only focusing on even if there was only Atlanta, I would never even put that on there because like I want everyone to come to Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like I want as many people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and sometimes, I mean, maybe if you see a conflict, you can if you know, if we're all getting more connected um, through Slack, you can just, con you know, contact them and be like, you know, you know, what are you thinking? Like, what do you what's your appeal? If you're if you're not familiar with their camp. Um, I know that we had an overlap with Colorado one time, and even though we're not that geographically related, the people who wanted to go to the camp wanted to go to both of them. It just kind of appealed to the same audience. So Asheville, Colorado. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that, I mean, that does get to a good point. Yeah. Uh, well, um, something that just occurred to me as you're talking about this. Can you come up to the mic, please? Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll finish my thought. Um, that gets to a good point. Um, that. We kind of had uh, in the mid camp conversations, uh, mid camps in, in March, uh, so we just finished up recently. Um, you know, the question of what are we really doing with all these camps? Um, you know, we do mid camp and we know that we do mid camp, but we're not really sure why we do mid camp sometimes, except for like we want to have a camp in Chicago. Um, so the question of do we have a target audience? Do we, you know, do we try and segment things more regionally? Because a lot of people do travel around for these camps, but the word the, the word camps are, are much more intended to be regional events that, that are mostly, I think Andrea said, like they folk, they, they try and attempt to be like 80% local. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a totally valid question, like why does your camp exist? Um, so. Um, when, you're, when you're talking about uh, coordinating with other, with other uh, camps or just competing with them or something like that. It just struck me, is there much uh, coordinating on speakers? Like you could fly someone in from Europe if there are say three camps who want to have the speaker do the same presentation. Hmm. That's no, point. there isn't. And I probably, <laughs> and, and, and you, when you say speaker, do you mean like just presenters or keynotes? Because there's, e a, diff there's, a, difference. there's I, a difference. There's a difference for me. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know because I've never, I've never organized a camp. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm just thinking, you're not just competing, you can be cooperating, you could be working with other people to say, let's get someone to do a talk on this, and maybe they have to come from Germany or something, but if, there are m if there's more than one camp doing it, that could become possible. It's interesting. It's interesting, <coughs> I had speakers cancel because they were going to Florida, but they were accepted and then they canceled, so it's a, it's a thing. Right. Competition, you know, speakers competing. I mean, at the end, of the, the one thing, that I, that I sometimes, I'm a little bit against the grain when it talks about like community and stuff. Like <laughs> what I'm trying, and what I'm trying to say is for me and for Drupal Camp Atlanta, how we organize it and how we look at it is like, yo, we're a 30, we have a $30,000 contract with the hotel and we're on the hook for hotel room nights. So to me, it is a competition and, and, and it's a business entity, right? And if it doesn't succeed, financially fails, then the camp can be ruined forever. So while I appreciate the concept of collaboration, I, I do believe that there are a way, there is a way to do that, but I would definitely not pick, a, you know, a speaker, a keynote, like, hey, let's book the same keynote. And it's like, no, man, like, because, like, they might go to Florida instead if it's the same one. So for me, it's, it's about risk, and we're taking on a ton, a ton, a ton of risk. Um, so that's, that's just how I feel. I think you had an interesting point, though, is if we were able to collaborate and say we want this person to do a keynote at our camps, and we almost set up, like, we work together to set up sort of a tour and share in some expenses and things like that so that, you know, you're not having to fly that same person out from, you know, out of the country mm -hmm. for multiple camps. We can, like, more collaboration. Um, they could do different keynote presentations or whatever. Um, but that was just an interesting, interesting point because interesting. if we're all on the Slack, we can all communicate. You know, it's really hard to know who is who. We don't we, we don't get together you know all the time. So just being able to go on Slack and be like, hey, you organize this camp. You know, I'm thinking about doing something like this. Would you be interested in collaborating with me or something like that? Um, yeah. Was a great way, great reason to stay connected. Yeah, I I'll bring up one more challenge to that uh, is that you know as we're so. Uh, Kevin Thal uh, from Chicago, who is on the MidCamp, who's now the MidCamp organizer, has been working on uh, recording sessions, and, and uh, he's got an amazing kit. And basically, any camp he goes to is, is completely recorded. Uh, he's amazing. We're going to work on abstracting the, the Kevin 
Um, we should have made a slide for Kevin. <laughs> just, just a Kevin slide. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, with, with, with session recordings, um, the more we're, we're recording, the question comes up, like, how, how do we negotiate generating new content versus providing people in different places the experience to, to meet those speakers face to face? So, um, you know, it's, it's great to do the same talk three, four, half a dozen times, um, but what's the value add there? Um, and if, you know, it, it's, it's really, like I said, it's great to meet people face to face, but we, that has to be a balance with keeping the content fresh. Um, hi, I'm Dasio. Uh, so Drupal Camp uh, in Vienna and the Drupal Mountain Camp in Switzerland. Um, hello. <laughs> Yeah, um, something that in Europe has happened is that we have specific camps around topics, like we have Drupal Developer Days, Frontend United, and those camps, they travel from region to region. And I was interested if you had like similar concepts in the US. Well, we tried that and it didn't work. Um, so the original intent, uh, Midcamp was originally the Midwest Regional Drupal Camp. Uh, and the idea was to kind of unite all of these cities in the Midwest that are doing their own camps um, to try and kind of share the burden. So we've got uh, Twin Cities, there's St. Louis, uh, there's some Ohio camps, there's Chicago, um, there's I Drupal Corn. Um, so trying to find some way to kind of unite all of those, those things. Um, what we found is just it was really hard uh, sharing, you know, uh, in Chicago, we have to plan an event a year out uh, to get a venue at all, um, whereas you know, in St. Louis or you know somewhere else, they, it might be different. Or one place might have a university, another place might not. Um, so so yeah, it, it we found we needed a more consistent presence to be able to do it on a on a repeatable basis. Um, the Canada camps do a rotating thing, and didn't the Pacific Northwest do that? But were you talking about focus though, like focus camps, well, right? You were talking yeah. about focused ones, and there are a few, and they've stayed. So I feel like GovCon is There's one. Design for Drupal. Design right? for Drupal is yeah. another one. So there are. But. Oh right, right. I'm just saying, as far as focused camps, right. as far as focus camps, there are a few. There are right, a couple. But they, yeah, they're. But they don't rotate. They're all yeah, they're all in the same cities. And that's something we're experimenting this year uh, in Asheville is adding a Drupal Science Summit. So like people who use science or use Drupal to communicate science. So we figured maybe we can get a niche and maybe we can um, reach a different audience and pull in some more people for camp. I mean, the other problem is the US is big. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's the balance too, is that it's, you, you could take a train across Europe in like a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bigger than that. Uh, anyway, can you, you introduce have yourself? Slide on before I talk. I, I think didn't want you to miss slides. out on the slides. I've already been, you know. Oh, this <clears> will <throat> be for later. <laughs> Killian has a. <laughs> Go ahead. Go. Okay. Okay. So, um, there was that question earlier about pollinating other speakers, and we've actually done that. Mm -hmm. So we brought out Zach Rosen from Pantheon back in twenty. 14 or 2015, and then he keynoted PA Camp, which was that same weekend. Um, in fact, I think we did a caravan <laughs> from our event up to PA Camp, which just keynoted last year. It was a pretty cool way of making it possible for PA Camp, which is a small camp, to have a larger name to come and speak at their camp because they don't get that. And because they're so regional, there was no way for us to be, we weren't really drawing from the same pot as, as you were pointing out. I, I can't think of another similar area to you guys where you would be able to do that. I mean, maybe Asheville, I mean, we're kind of close, but not really. I mean, you guys don't have the yeah. same dates. Yeah. I mean, it worked out for us because they were having it literally the same, the very right. next weekend. And I think we're gonna, we might do something yeah. similar with decoupled days because I think they're literally the weekend before we go. So it might be possible to do the two. Cool. So we'll look into that. Thank you. Hello. 
<clears throat> I'm Jacob. Uh, I do PNWDS. Um, so Amber mentioned that she's uh, in Portland. And so one unique part about our conference is that <clears throat> we actually have Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver, BC. And there are three different organizing groups, but through, you know, we use Slack and then uh, we rotate every single year. And what, we've done this since 2009? Yeah, 2008. So it's almost 10 years. Uh, and it's been pretty successful. Uh, I think being able to have a few members uh, rotate through. So I rotate through on the tech team uh, through every single event. And just having a little bit of consistency between um, event has actually made it a lot easier to get the, the back end stuff sort of working right, the, the sort of logistical things so that you know, each region can focus on things like you know, getting your venue, getting your local sponsors, getting um, you know, your local program. Uh, but then get you know help from other people in the other regions. It's also also given us a decent um, you know, We have money to to pay forward on every single event. So that's reduced our risk uh, The only other Oh, yeah, it also helps avoid burnout because mm -hmm. like, Yeah Because to... <laughs> Amber Amber does a lot more work than I do <laughs> and so, yeah, burnout's a she real does, thing. She does all of it. So, <laughs> yeah. so Amber does a lot more work than I do. Uh, so, you know, she does a lot of work. You know, this year, and she did a lot of work in 2014. And then I do, you know, a little bit of work every every year. Um, you know, it depends on how how you like to work and and you know how you want to contribute. But it's worked really well for us. Uh, the one other thing I would contribute to this is, uh, I think I like how the PNWDS has made sort of a we have a mission statement, if you say it accurate. Uh, where we, we focus on being a summit of talking about advanced Drupal topics. Um, and, and I think it's been nice to be able to give people sort of expectations about, okay, if I'm coming to PNWDS, I'm gonna see you know, topics about advanced Drupal things and that we're not gonna be all over the board. Um, that's certainly helpful for me. Sort of works, yeah, it only sort of works, but, um, but we try to do that. Um, I would love to see more of that um, because I think having mission-based camps uh, is certainly better for, for everyone. So thanks, guys. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Me and Tom. Um, I think, are we going till one? We still have a whole lot Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Unless so somebody needs to eat lunch. Yeah, so just so everybody, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're technically a time. Uh, there's nothing in this room. We're gonna stay here for as long as there are other people here, or I guess we are. Okay, my. All right, go ahead. Can I go for asking one big question? Because I'm following up with the uh, rest of the business and agencies. Uh, anyway, I got time. Yeah. All right, so the big question is we just listened to the um, WordCamp community organizer talking about how WordCamp, whether it's the meetups and such, have been centralized. Is there interest in doing that for the Drupal community? Uh, that's a loaded question. That's a lo that's a loaded question. Yeah. So, um, yeah. For for folks who who didn't come to the talk this morning, um, WordPress has a has a completely centralized kind of management structure. Andrea's here. I'm gonna hopefully not butcher all of her words. She said really good words. It's recorded. Um, listen to it afterwards yeah. if you didn't. They're yeah. really really good words. Um, anyway, uh, automatic, which is the the commercial. Um, Arm, it's uh, huh? so like their aqua. Their aqua, yeah. Aquia. yeah. Uh, <laughs> they have a staff of eight, soon to be ten people who support their community programs, the word camps, and the meetups. Um, they provide a lot of services in addition to the fiscal agency, which the DA does. Um, they do websites, they do email addresses, um, they vet all the camps, uh, they provide a lot of guidelines. Uh, it's a ton of infrastructure uh, that, that they provide to the camps. Uh, in exchange, camps have to give up some autonomy. Camps aren't developing mm -hmm. their own websites and can't do crazy stuff with them. That's, I think it's okay. So uh, was, your was your question, is there a plan to? No, no, see that's the thing is, is like, do I, yeah, is there interest in doing that? Because I mean, that I think, is, I think that know. would be a question from the, for the, either the, probably the DA, I would say, but I, I would, I would love to see some sort of, you know, like if it was Drupal dot camps and each one got like, you know, their own little URL attached mm -hmm. to it and there was a website that listed all the camps. I mean, right. that would be wonderful, but right. I, I see, don't know if that's for see, us. See, I'm in the I'm in the area that I'm 
working on the business leadership aspects for the Drupal community. Okay. Okay. And what's happening is I'm realizing that I'm having to actually also get a bit involved in the organization of the camps in order to help advance the business leadership. Okay. Which we appreciate. <laughs> Thank You're you. welcome. And it's like here in literally an hour, I'm going into the business round table for with the Drupal Association, and it's like, I would like to start seeing us be a little bit more centralized. Yes, around, the answer is yes. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I and we, like should all have, it. <laughs> we should all have free tables here, too. We should all get free tables. Yes, yes. Like, I mean, that's, that's when just... You, when you're saying free tables, I don't... I don't but free vendor tables. We should all, we should have a Drupal camp, uh, a Drupal camp, every, every, every con, we should have a table there that promote our camps. I mean, Absolutely. All right, it's so. plain and simple. So yes, any right. support would be greatly so appreciated. So how about this? In case you don't know me, my name is Michael Cannon of Accelerant. Reach out to me with what you want or not in driving centralization efforts of camps, cons, whatever. Pay pay to get cod built. <laughs> <laughs> pay to yeah. get pay to get cod built and give us a table at every DrupalCon, right. and maybe so. pay for every keynote speaker. I'll, so I'll I think, yeah, right. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to, to grow this organization. We've, you know, with the Slack team, we've at least got all the camp organizers talking for the last couple of years. Um, I, I mean, I could see this going a similar route to the DDI initiative where, you know, it's a, it's a organized thing and, and has a little more official recognition. Um, Ooh, I would like some recognition as well somehow. <laughs> That's the other but, thing. And one thing I, I need to know that this is, this is something I've wanted or not. Yeah, and I think one thing that's interesting about the way that they do it is that they do get that high level sponsorship that does yes. trickle down. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You're reaching some of the bigger companies that you can't do as a camp. I mean, some camps might, depending on where they're placed or whatever, but like just having like even that 20% of funding that comes from big companies that are funding all the camps is Absolutely. pretty pretty awesome. Right. I would just love the keynote. I would just love pay for my keynote, get us the keynote. And I'm I'm good. I'm good right. with that. Ooh. What was that? But you can get them there. She oh. said that they never pay speakers. Oh. Yeah. Right. That Yeah, we pay our speakers. Yeah. We don't pay our speakers. <laughs> we pay our keynote, I'm sorry. Uh, but what about transportation? No. No. Okay. Wow. No travel, no nothing. Wow. Yeah, see, we're, we're, yeah, yeah, that, we're a little wow. different that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, but that's, that's exactly the point. All of our camps are, are, are work a little bit differently, yeah. but, you know, we, uh, part of Andrea's talk was this was a really, really hard process for the WordPress community mm -hmm. uh, to reconcile all of these different DIY groups. Um, who, who reimburses speakers? Does anyone, do you? Well, ours, ours is free, but we pay for their travel. We pay travel. Okay. So most everybody, okay, good. So a couple camps pay travel. Sometimes we offer scholarships for our, for our speakers. Sometimes scholarships. Yeah. We get, speakers get free tickets to mid camp, but that's, we, that's it. We consider it to be like, uh, yeah, sorry. I totally, I'm so sorry. Okay. We consider it to be part of participating in, in the summit. It's a sharing of ideas and everyone is participating, whether you're a speaker or, um, uh, uh, an attendee, and we even make speakers pay for tickets. Oh yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. and some of this I think would be great to standardize so that we're not like, well, you know, mid camp gave me five hundred dollars to speak, and you're only offering me three hundred. You know, right. like, yeah. I think if we, we had some sort of standardization right. of okay, like Indeed. a keynote is worth this much, or is worth travel, or there's some sort of standard so that we're not, you know, competing. We're mm -hmm. not competing, right? Yeah. Sorry, we've got a new question. Okay, no, so. my, mine is a follow-on to Michael, and um, I'm involved in the DD&I initiative, and I want to bring that initiative to the camps. We need a way to tie in what we're doing centrally and get flow that down to the camps. You know, do we have sponsorships? Do we have sessions? Do we have you know? How does it affect our code of conduct? We need to bring all that down. We need that sooner rather than later. So I'd say that that would be a, a very early initiative if you're saying there's like a three year process to do this. This is my initiative. Yeah, idea. which I, I think you're right. I have, I have to sell it, I have to make sure people Yes, process. we definitely want the, you know, we definitely want to bring the, the DD&I initiative into the camps. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot to do in that regard. 
I think a speakers bureau would be like we talked about that in the DDI initiative mm -hmm. thing. Having a speak like a speakers type bureau would be wonderful. Yeah. Like for keynotes and, and like because it's you know you only know Give so many people right? right. So it'd be great if there was you know a, a, a speakers bureau like we were talking about for diversity like a list of speakers yes. that could help um, you know make your 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 panels or your sessions more. More yes, diverse. more inclusive. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, Kirsten and I were talking about, you know, how do we, how do, we do this for GovCon this year? And right. we kind of went, it's huge. It's, it's hard. Like, it's you know, hard how to do. do we get our heads around it yeah. and, and get, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, maybe I need to be dedicated just to that in the camp and, you know, figure out how to at least start. And so, and we need to be able to share that and a lot of that leadership has to come from the dd and initiative. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to go off and do our own independent thing it's it, we're working so hard in that group that there's no reason that that can't filter down to the camps yeah, yeah. And it's That's also a really good a good sounding board you know i had a form that i needed to identify gender um, identity because i need to match people for a roommate you know set up and so i i vetted it through oh, drupal that slack you. that was me yeah, I was like, I don't want to ostracize people. I don't want to ask gender identity right. just arbitrarily, but I kind of need to know in order to d do some matching and stuff like that. So um, I just wanted to be, you know, empathetic. I want to be inclusive. I want to be, you know, have diversity, and I don't want to ostracize anyone. Um, so that was a great, you know, having some guidelines, even just for event planning from uh, the diversity and inclusion group would be great. You know, like, how do we make sure, you know, how do we... How do we make sure we have a diverse speakers without, you know, doing it in a weird way? Like, you know, just accepting someone because they're a woman or something like that. Like just some, mm -hmm. some great guidelines that we can use as event planners to make sure that we're being uh, inclusive. I had a panel last year and, uh, you know, I reached out to a bunch of people and they just weren't available. So I had a panel of well, three white guys, you know, and it was, uh, I mean, it happened, you know. Um, so yeah, the speakers bureau thing is really, but really so when important. That happens, you know, the DD and I Slack is available. Go in there. Ask for help. Well, I did. I did. Was that I, your yeah. No. I mean, like, so things happen. You know. <laughs> All right. So thing, and it was yeah. a contrib panel. So you know, the panel was focused. It was good. And I was looking for people who are maintainers of contrib modules. So it was very difficult. Absolutely. Like, well, we can all share that. Right. That'd be awesome. Colleen, do you want to do right. one helpful my, tip? My one helpful tip, because I heard some camps do this. They just do it out of their own checking account. So my one helpful tip is to get an LLC and run it through a real company. Okay? Also, set up, like, you know, official, like, we put our board members on the website um, and I didn't want to run it through the Drupal Association. Like, you know, they, we tried to do this thing where they're like, oh, we can do it and we take a cut. No, no I'm not, we're not doing that, you know. So we have our own LLC. We're protected. And, um, yeah, like, w w just back to the whole Drupal's, if you're going back, like, we're not, we don't want to give you back any money. Like, I, I hope that that's. Well, that's, that's going to be actually a major issue. Yeah, so we're, so, so we're not, we're not a, a, a revenue stream for the Drupal for DrupalCon and the Drupal Association. Well, so I, 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 my camp's not. We're not going to get it. Because like, they attempted to do it a couple of years ago. I'm like, what, are you, are you serious? You know, I'm like, actually so. on the very first one was an actual process of professional stuff. Yeah. There was nothing for me as a business at this camp I want to go. That's OK. No, it's not. It is, no it is a big contention, the return on investment. How do we continue to prove a return on investment for sponsorships? Yeah. Well, you want my company to invest in Drupal Camp Atlanta? I was so excited to go to Atlanta. I mean, that's, sure. a, that's okay. Part of, part of the idea for you, about... For you, However, I understand. The thing is, is if you want more people to be coming, uh, it's like especially if you want my people from my company to come and to talk about advanced topics on Drupal or uh, maybe have companies help sponsor, bring them in, people to talk about the DDI initiatives, you're probably going to need to open up a little bit. 
When you say open up, what do you mean? Well, open up as in, um, okay, how about this? I, what I feel is a bit of a conflict here is you're saying that you want some centralization. However, part of that centralization is meaning that it's going to become some standards. And there's special limitations that are very helpful within this ministry and that help protect potentially the, the, the triple champ, triple punch from say Malthusian, John Lee was using that, is pretty much say a centralized So, while hmm. you, so basically, it's like your ticket sales little niche has come through this little niche has come through you. The money will go to you. However, there is going to be say that two and a half percent or whatever the credit card fee is going to be. Yeah, we probably. Yeah, we probably just wouldn't be a part of that. Probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, but so so I don't, so I don't think we would do that. So, so I just feel like we have a different of opinion. So for me, I feel like the camps support Drupal. That's what that's what we're, that's what we're here to do. And and the camps also, in a, in an indirect way, are a way for people to prepare for DrupalCon in a way. So like we're already doing like I hear what you're saying. Like we're already good. We're already good at that process. So what you're telling me is is like oh if if you want if you want our help, you you're gonna have to. Well, but part of the yeah, uh, so part of the I conversation, just, part of the conversation, really is: should you know, uh, do we do we want camps to support each other? Um, and and you know, part of part of the WordPress model is camps that make more money help go back into the pot to support new camps. So yeah. you know, they have a sliding scale for what they will, how much the central uh, organization will will grant a camp, and it starts at a, a pretty high level. Mm -hmm. So. You know, if you're starting a brand new camp in a brand new city, you get a huge amount of money from the central organization well, because you don't it's have. Not really say a huge amount of money because it's all well, relative. But say like up but, to eighty percent. Right. Of you get a of your initial expenses might be covered. But right. say you're five years in, it might and there's be getting a minimum of twenty to twenty five percent. Right. There's no way to support that kind of that high level support without everybody pitching in. Um, but but there's you know there there's there's a lot of. There's a lot of conversations to be had about what that looks like and how it's how everybody's disparate models yeah. contribute back to that. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's, right. that won't work. Mm -mm. Yeah, so. Right, so there is the Drupal, um, Drupal Camp fiscal sponsorship. Are you aware of that program no, as it stands? Um, so I think the initiative has been cut off. Kind of like They're not accepting new camps as far as I know. Right. Um, but they provide accounting. They provide a centralized uh, PayPal. It's the fiscal sponsorship from the Drupal Association. Um, and so they provide the accounting piece. They have a PayPal email address that all our money goes there. And they send us spreadsheets, but it's not, there's no automated process similar to the WordPress thing that we saw. It is done through email. It is done, oh, we messed up here, so we're now taking $100 from your account or, you know, that sort of thing. Right. Um, they, we're, as a fiscal sponsor, um, a camp is supposed to be able to operate under their um, nonprofit status, which I think some people are finding that the Drupal Association will not sign anything any longer that's going to, you know, if your venue, if, you know, whatever, you're, whoever you're dealing with requires that someone from the, the nonprofit sign something, then you're going to have a problem. They also revoked um, event insurance. We now have to provide our own event insurance, and they will not sign as liability for that as well. And so these are things that are making me really nervous coming up into my camp um, because I've already heard other people having issues like we can't get the event insurance. We don't feel comfortable signing it as an individual because then we are liable. Um, those sort of things that I think 
you know, we are still giving that 10% back. And I, and I don't have a problem with giving back to the Drupal Association. We're community builders, the money goes in, and it continues to make the community better as well and help other camps. Um, but I think, you know, the WordPress way may not be the way for us, but it's a great model to start with, definitely. And um, I think that we could all work together and find something that works for us. Um, but it's going to need, we're going to need that support a centralized support and some sense of standards that we can all agree on, but we can all still keep our, you know, some custom things. Valid. Yes, you know, I, I think so. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So yeah, um, that's that's it. We're we'll we'll hang out and chat. Or I'll hang out and chat more. Um, there um, is a session. Yeah. I don't think we have it in the slide. Um, yeah. So it's uh, three forty-five back in this room. Um, Joseph is doing that camp organizer survival guide. Uh, so he's going to tell a little bit of his story about organizing camps, and then uh, we'll do some more Q and A for more folks who are here. I'll be back here. Uh, um, tomorrow we have a boff scheduled. Uh, when is that? I don't remember when it is. Um, it is I think one to two. One to two tomorrow. Cool. And then if you're not on the camp organizer Slack, oh yeah. Yeah. Join up, uh, or I can invite you. And thanks for coming. You can right, keep your you serving. Go. Yes, awesome. thank you. So I'm just curious, what is it that you want to get out of camp from the sponsor? So like uh, that, 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 that comment confused me. Questions for the Yeah. Yeah, so what is it? That's also even something that I want. Okay, what got this all started is, you know, I went to uh, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. I actually had it. Yeah. Had it, uh, and uh, and it was here. Agency leader. Oh. Okay. First, wait, did you, you said uh, an agency, an yeah. agency yeah. dinner? Agency dinner. Okay. Oh, they, they, so they, yeah. they, um, they set that up. Yeah. As no, 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 I, I set oh, you set up. Okay. I ain't going for making people work harder. Okay. All right. And I'll, so first off, it's like I actually had it all booked. I ended up with like 15 white guys. Oh, I ran off and I had to be worried about more of my diversity issues. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. So I used to go out here and talk to you about it. Well, then I started getting into conversations with that. So you have to choose. So what you choose? Interesting position. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like it started to help me okay. understand that so there's a lack of centralization, um, lack of coordination. Right. It's like I remember. But back to the sponsorship so question: What is it as a sponsor that you, when you say I go to Drupal Camp Aaron is not important? What is it specifically that you're looking for? Right. In this, in this case, actually yeah. having right. okay. more do I want to get cool. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, so what is the module called again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is oh, no. I think it's just called. I so then the camp's made up of mostly not, people who are presenting. So it's a bit on the small side. Like and actually what's even more cool. Yeah, yeah. there's a course, there's training. Uh, and this is the first one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, and this is very so one to figure out. Oh, cool. It'll be a DA in the presence. Okay, so this is Yeah, I mean, this is a million camps. You can't sponsor that. Yeah, yeah, Okay. And I'm not even clear when you get there. It's like, yeah. Like, you're in big conference, like, cool. Right. And NBC. Like, in the why? So why aren't they there is the question. Yeah, I'm like, there's no relationship for them. So in order to do so, that's a very good question. And we've talked about that. It's like, how do we get those companies there? Because we're the users group and we're not, we don't have a client list. So when, when the Media Current had the camp up in uh, uh, Marietta, that last awesome one, it was like 400 people because they can pick up the phone she and start calling one thing this that is the I first year like we've done like a focused summit. The other so we have we also have some Friday. We're gonna do it on Friday. It's sort of it's the Friday activity, but there are also some trainings available on Friday, 
and then our Saturday camp is our typical Saturday camp so with sessions. But there can definitely be, yeah. you know, science like sessions based on yeah. uh, sessions. But, but just um, we have we NCEI is hosted like, in no, uh, Asheville, the federal the uh, entity of NOAA. Like, so it's where all the um, satellite climate data is archived and processed and all that happens.